this lesson is about polarization. Polar means ends. Polarization means to make there to be ends. Now what on earth does that mean in terms of electrostatics? First we need to remind ourselves of some things we know. We know that positive and negative, in other words oppositely charged objects, attract one another, but like charged objects repel one another. But now it is possible that either a positive or a negatively charged object can attract a neutral object. How can that be? The reason why that is possible is because the neutral object does actually contain positive and negative charges that can be moved. Not all neutral objects can be attracted to charged objects. Only those where the positive and negative charges inside can be moved to ends, to poles. In other words, the neutral object can be polarized to have a negative end and a positive end. Let's take an example to understand this better. Here we have some pieces of paper. These pieces of paper are neutral. There are just as many negative charges as positive charges in them. And these charges are evenly spread all around the piece of paper. Then we bring a negatively charged ruler nearby. You can do this easily yourself. You can charge a ruler negatively by rubbing it against a jersey. The jersey doesn't hold its electrons very tightly and it loses some electrons to the ruler. Then the ruler has more electrons than it has positives, protons, and so now it's negatively charged. So we bring this negatively charged ruler near to little pieces of paper and you will see that the ruler will pick up the pieces of paper. Why? The negatively charged ruler repels the negative charges inside the piece of paper. That makes those negative charges move because in paper the charges are able to move to an extent. So those negative charges move as far as they can away from the ruler. So that creates pulls on the pieces of paper. One end becomes a negative pull and the other end a positive pull. The positive end of the pieces of paper are attracted to the negative ruler. And since they are closer to the ruler than the negatives in the paper, they are attracted to the ruler stronger than the negatives are repelled. And so there's an overall attraction between the neutral pieces of paper and the charged ruler. And that makes the pieces of paper stick to the ruler. Let's take another example to understand this even better. Water. This is a model of a water molecule. You know, of course, what water looks like in the macroscopic form as we see it every day. But scientists try to understand what that water looks like on the microscopic level. And this is one of the models that they use. Each water molecule consists of two hydrogen atoms bonded to an oxygen atom. These are covalent bonds, meaning that electrons are shared between the hydrogen and the oxygen. But in the case of water, these covalent bonds don't involve equal sharing between the two atoms. Oxygen is more greedy than hydrogen, and so it pulls the shared electron pairs closer to itself than hydrogen does. As a result, there's a negative end on the oxygen side of the molecule because those shared electrons spend more time on the oxygen side because the oxygen is more greedy for them. And so compared to that end, the other end is a positive end. It doesn't have electrons spending so much time in it. So we can visualize a water molecule like this. The negative end, negative pole in other words, on the oxygen end and a positive pole on the hydrogen end. We call water a polar molecule because of this. Now if you take a ruler or a rod and you charge it negatively, or you can charge it positively, however it doesn't matter, but let's say for example we charge it negatively. You can do that by taking the rod and rubbing it against some kind of material. Perhaps the rod is made of plastic and maybe you rub it against a jersey. And the jersey loses some electrons to the plastic rod and that charges the plastic rod negatively. 
If you hold that charged rod near to a stream of water, the water will not go straight. It will bend. It will bend towards the rod. Why? The water itself is neutral, and yet it's attracted to the rod. It's because the water particles are polar. So here we have the water particles shown in microscopic form, and we have this negatively charged rod. Now when the water particles are just flowing normally, they face many different directions. But now when this negative rod comes around, the water particles turn so that their positive ends are closer to the negative rod because positive and negative attract. And their negative ends are further from the rod because negative and negative repel. And so the stream of water bends towards the rod.